All right, here we go. Let's do the very last new lesson of the year. I'm still going to be teaching you stuff, all right, but it's going to be all review after today. So this is the last brand new thing that we're going to do for the whole entire year. That's kind of exciting, isn't it? Yeah? No? All right. Thank you. All right. Do you have to take a final? Well, if you don't average an A, then you'll have to take a final. I don't even know what the rules are. I don't know if you have to average an A for the whole year or just third and fourth marking period. Have, has you're told third and fourth? Okay. I'll make sure. I'll double check. Um, but keep an eye on your grades, all right? You should be able to, even on RenWeb, you should be able to get on there and see your report card grades, right, from all four marking periods. Well, three so far. You should be able to. And you can average, can't you? Right? You should be able to average to see. But see, if it's the third and fourth marking period, yeah, I guess we could consider, we could figure out the grades now. Anyway, I'll talk to somebody, Mr. Osborne, and see what he says. All right, let's talk about a kite. You ever fly a kite? Has anybody flown a kite before? You've never flown a kite? Ah, you don't know what you're missing. Flying kites are fun. I remember back when um, I was a little kid, our church, our church was really big. I mean, we, we, had, um, we had like a couple thousand people that would attend our church every Sunday. Everybody listening now? All right, I'm not going to tell the story because it doesn't seem like you're listening. Let's just talk about Because when I tell stories, I want you paying attention. But as soon as I start saying something, then I see eyes drifting away, people not paying attention. It's like, oh, here he goes again. So I won't tell the story then. It wasn't that exciting, but still, it would have been better. So that looks, I'm trying to make these the same. About like that. Copy of the test. What do you mean? A quiz or a test? Didn't I give it to him already? Didn't I give it to you? No, I, because I don't have any extras. Oh, goodness. Hold on. All right, here we go. It's not the, it's not the prettiest looking kite in the world. Tell you what, I am not satisfied with that. Let's do this. Let's do this. I'm going to group that. I'm going to copy and paste it. Everybody's looking up here, right? For only having half the class, you're behaving worse than the whole class was here. So let's pay attention. Uh, what do I want? I don't want that thing. I want this. And then I want to flip it horizontally. Nope, I want to, don't want to do that. Let's try this one more time. Guys, just sit here and watch me flounder here. <laughs> and let's flip it again. I'm not doing this quite right. Okay, that's what I want right there. There we go. Now that looks much better. Okay, here we go. This is a kite. It's going to tell you a fun story about me and a kite, but that's all right. You won't listen, so. Yep. It's right in the middle. It goes from this vertex to that vertex. And, yeah. So let's talk about this for a sec. Let's talk about what a kite actually is, and I'm going to tell you something else about a kite. But what is a kite? Well, a kite has exactly one pair of opposite angles. Now, actually, we've talked about a kite before, haven't we? Yeah, we talked about a kite. So what is the definition of a kite? The definition of a kite that it has two pairs of equal sides but they're consecutive sides. They're not across from each other. So like this side WZ will never equal this side XY if this is a kite. Everybody see that? On a parallelogram, we always talk about the opposite sides being equal to each other. But on a kite, it's two pairs of consecutive sides. It doesn't mean that every pair of consecutive sides are equal to each other, but it has two pair of consecutive sides. Which ones are they? WX and what else? What, do you, what else do you think might be equal to WX here? It's pretty easy. It's not hard. WZ, absolutely. Okay, they look equal, don't they? 
So they are equal to each other if this is a kite. So if I tell you it's a kite, these two are equal to each other because they're next to each other. Do you see how they, they come together right here? All right, so they're next to each other. What other two sides are next to each other? Consecutive X, side, y. X, Y, and Z, Y, or Y, Z, right, okay? So that means that that's a kite. Everybody got that? There's another thing. Actually, that's the only thing that we learned so far about a kite. That's it. That's the definition of a kite. What we're going to do is we're going to learn three theorems um, that are true about a kite, right? This is not a theorem. This is a definition. So this right there with that information, that's a kite. So here's our first theorem. Our first theorem says there's exactly one pair of opposite angles that are congruent to each other. Hear what I just said? There's exactly, there's not more than, there's not less than, there is exactly one pair of angles. Now when I say one pair, how many angles is that? One pair, two, right. So which ones do you think, which opposite angles do you think might possibly be equal to each other? X and Z, absolutely. There's no way that this Y or this W and this Y are equal to each other. See how skinny that one is? See how fat this one is right there? There's no, what, no way that those two angles are equal to each other, but angle X and angle Z are definitely equal to each other. And there's a reason. Do you remember we did like side, 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 postulate and all that stuff, right, for congruent triangles? If you look at it, what's true about WY? It's shared by both of these, isn't it? So these two triangles are congruent. So if I took those two triangles and I folded them up like this, all the corresponding parts would be equal to each other as well. What does that mean? That means if I folded them, the parts that match up, okay, if I folded this in half, if that was my fold line right there, if I folded them, which angles would match up? This angle right here, yes, and this angle right here, right? They would match up, so they are equal to each other. And that's it as far as the whole angle of the kite, right? This angle right here is not equal to that angle right there. Shouldn't even draw it just to, so you wouldn't even think that they were. All right, so this big angle W and this big angle Y are not equal, but X and Z are equal. That's our first theorem. Everybody got that? So let's write it down. Angle X equals angle Z. That's from our first theorem. Here is another theorem. It says this. It says the diagonals of the kite. Let's draw the diagonals. I already got one diagonal drawn. What's the diagonal already in this picture of the whole kite? The WY, right. That's the one that goes right down the middle like this. That's also a diagonal. Where could I draw another diagonal? From where to where? From Z to Y? Now that's already a side of my kite. X to Z, exactly. That would be another diagonal. So if I drew it from here to here, that would be a diagonal. Now, what does it look like to you? Whoops. I want to make that red. All right, what does it look like to you might be true about those two diagonals? Look what angle it forms. That's right, they form a right angle, and so that's exactly what I was looking for. They are perpendicular to each other. So let's write that down. So I could say that line segment XZ is perpendicular to what? Line segment WY. Put the line segment thing over top of it. Do you remember that symbol right there, perpendicular? All right, so those are two things that we know about this. Everybody good? Everybody got that? Um, they give these two names a fancy word, fancy names, but I don't really care. But I will tell you what it is, though. It says uh, the axis of symmetry, all right, this WY right there, they give it a fancy name. I don't think it's super important that you know it, but they call it the axis of symmetry. If I say something is symmetrical, have you ever heard that word before? Have you any, heard anybody use it? What does that mean if these two things are symmetrical? It means like if you put a line down the middle, what would be true? Exact same thing on both sides. Exactly right. Everybody see that? So if this is the axis of symmetry, remember we talked about this earlier. If I took that kite and I folded it along WY, it's exactly the same on the top as on the bottom. Yes? You see that, don't you? So that's why they call it the axis of symmetry. They give this, word, this um, diagonal right there, the XZ, they give that a word. 
okay, its own word, and they call it the crossbar. That kind of makes sense, right? Think of the football um, goalpost, all right? You got the one in the middle, and then you got the one going across, right? Then you got them going up and down. So that one going across is the what? It's the crossbar. And that's kind of what's going on here, isn't it? This is kind of like the crossbar. It's not kind of, it is. It's exactly the crossbar, all right? Everybody with, with me on that? So that was just vocabulary. Let's uh, talk about this a second. The crossbar is actually being bisected. I'm going to do this in a different color because we've got too much red going on here. All right, so the crossbar is being bisected. What does that mean? We'll call this X. Oh, no, we already called that X. What did I... Oh, I, I see what they did. They used these different letters, but that's okay. Let's call this, um, I don't know, Q. All right. So if the crossbar is being bisected by the axis of symmetry, I use a lot of words here, but everybody listen. Okay. It seems like a lot of stuff's going on. I don't know what's happening here. So let's all look up here, pay attention. This crossbar is being bisected. So what does that mean? It means it's cut in half. So give me some line segments that are equal to each other because the crossbar is bisected. X what? XQ must equal what? QZ, that's right. Or ZQ, it doesn't matter how you write it. Everybody see that? So right here, I'm gonna put, I'll just put one tick mark. It's in a different color, all right? It's not the same as this. Everybody got that? But I already got one, two, and three. I don't need to put four on there, it's just too much. All right, so I make one in yellow, one in yellow right there. So that's another thing that's true about it, all right? And yeah, there's something else that's true as well. This axis of symmetry, it does something to this big angle. Let's go different color again. Let's go blue. Do you see this big angle right there? What does it look like this axis of symmetry does to that big blue angle? It bisects it, and it absolutely does. Okay, so what can I do? I can say that this little blue one and this little blue one are equal to each other. What does that axis of symmetry look like it's doing to that big angle Y? It bisects it as well. Does that mean that this angle, though, is equal to this one? No. So I'm going to put two little blue arcs right there. So it means that these two are equal to each other, these two are equal to each other, but this one and this one are not equal to each other. Everybody with me? Because this whole big angle is not equal to this little skinny angle. So there's no way if I split them in half that all four of those are gonna be equal. But these two are definitely equal, and these two are definitely equal. Let's write those down. Let's, let's write this one right here. How would I name this little blue one, this blue one right there? How would I name that angle? Angle what? Start at X, X, W, Y, good. Now, if I wanted to, I could go X, W, what else? Q, right? It would be the same thing. All right, but yeah, let's use the original ones, X, W, Y. All right, so what's that equal to then? What's this angle equal to? Well, this one down here. So what, how am I going to name that one? Angle what? This little angle right here. How am I going to name that angle? Z, W, Y. Very good. Z, W, Y. All right, so those two angles are equal to each other. And there's one more thing. We've already shown it on the picture, but let's write it down. What else is equal? This little angle right here. So what's this little angle right there? X, Y, W. Good. So X, Y, W. And that's equal to this angle right here. What's that one? If we went X, Y, W, what are we going to do for this one? Z, Y, W, all right? So angle Z, Y, W. So all this stuff that I, I wrote two in red, one in yellow, two in blue, all that stuff you know about a kite now because those are theorems, okay? These are all theorems. The fact that these two red ones are equal and these two red ones are equal, that's the definition. And then we learned three different theorems, okay? And they told us that this was true they told us this was true, and they told us that this was true. So one, two, three, four, five different things 
that we know about a kite that we didn't know before. Okay, the only thing we knew before is that these two sides were equal and these two sides were equal. Now, today, after all these theorems, we know that these two, these two diagonals or the crossbar and the axis of symmetry, they're perpendicular. We know that this angle right here is bisected, so these two angles are equal. This angle's bisected, these two are equal. We know that that whole big angle X is equal to that whole big angle Z. And I think, yep, and I think, oh yeah, we know that this little bit right here, that yellow right there, and this yellow one right there, we know they're equal because that crossbar is being bisected. A lot of stuff that we know about a kite. All right, you gotta keep it straight. Go through it, read through it a couple times, and you should be able to keep it straight. Let's do an example with this stuff, and then we will be finished with the very last lesson of the year. All right, so I'm going to draw a kite. So I want this to be exactly the same as that, so I'm going to copy it. I'm going to flip it horizontally, and it should be... Perfect. There we go. And then all I got to do is connect from here to here. And then from there to there. There you go. You got a nice kite right now. And let's do the crossbar as well. It goes from there to there. All right. That's a nice kite. It's kind of an old fashioned kite. If you ever fly a kite, we're going to call this K I T E for kite. How about that? There you go. All right, and they tell you a couple things. They tell you that this, well, actually, I think they tell you that that's 55 degrees, and that's all they tell you, I think. Yep, that's it. That's the only thing they tell you. And they're going to ask you si uh, five different things about this kite. Like, how in the world can we figure out five different things when they only tell you one of these angles? Well, let's see what we're trying to find. I'm going to write down all the stuff we're trying to find. So we're trying to find an angle K, T, E. We want to find angle T, X, E. Oh, I didn't put the X in there. The X goes right here. All right. Uh, C is K, E, X. Angle K, E, X. Then D is K, E, T. And part E is K-I-E. All right, there we go. That's all the stuff that we are trying to find. Well, let's, let's go to this color. All right, what do we know right off the bat about another angle? I can tell you another angle in here. Well, I can tell you a couple angles. Abby, what do you think? Yeah, very good. Okay, I-X-T, that was, that's what you said, right? Yes. Yep. That's 90 degrees. Why? Because the crossbar and the axis symmetry are perpendicular. Okay, so those two diagonals of the kite, they're always going to hit at a right angle. So I know that that's a right angle, which means I know that angle X or TXE, there's TXE right there. What's TXE? That's also what? 90 degrees. Because if that's 90, then that has to be 90. All three, all four of these have to be 90, correct? All right. Uh, without even looking at what I'm trying to solve for. What's something else that I might know or could figure out from that information? I know this is 55, I know that's 90. What else, look at this right triangle right here. Forget everything else, just look at that right triangle. If this is 55 and that's 90, what else could I find? Are you, come on, you're paying attention. I could, you're hardly, anyway, just watch. What is it, T what? T E X, yeah, this little skinny one down here. You could figure out what that is. And how could I figure out what that is? Yeah, I could I could do that, okay? But I could do it in one step. Because if this is a right triangle, that's 90 degrees. They all add up to 180, right? So you know I'm going to subtract 90 from it already. So really, in one math step, instead of adding these up and then taking them away from nine or from 180, that's two steps. I could basically do it in one step. How could I find this other angle if I know this one right here in one step? Take 55 away from what? 
Nobody sees it? From what? From 90. That's right. Because look, 180 minus 90 is already what? 90. Yes? So that means that these two right here have to add up to 90. So in one step, I can just go 90 minus what? 55. And that's uh, 35 degrees. All right? So this angle right here is 35 degrees. Without even looking at this right here, I just want to fill in everything that I can fill in. All right? And then I bet you we'll probably have covered everything here. So if this is 35, tell me something about this one right here. That's also what? 35. Okay? Yeah? And then what's this one right here? That's 55. Uh, that's 90. Hmm. Can I find any of those? No, I can't. I can't find that one, can I? And I can't find that one. And I can't find this one or this one. Because there's no way. I don't know what those two add up to be. All right, maybe they're not on my list here. I could also find this whole thing, though, couldn't I? What's that whole angle right there? 70, that's right, because 35 and 35. All right, so now let's go through this and see if we've basically found everything. I think we have. Angle KTE, where's KTE? KTE. Well, why would they even give you that? That's weird, because they gave it to you as 55, right? Why would they ask for it? I don't know, but they do, so we'll write it down. So KTE, that's this angle right here. That's what they're asking for on part A. Everybody see that? Am I missing something there? No, that's what they tell you. All right, uh, TXE, we already found that, 90 degrees. TXE, so that one's 90. Uh, what about KEX? KEX, that's this little one down here. We already figured that one out, so that's 35. Then KET. K-E-T. Oh, we just found that. That whole thing is what? 70, right? What's the mat? What's the, the work? If I wanted to show the work, what would I do? I would just go 35 plus 35. All right? And then K-I-E. K, where's I? I-E. Hmm. Oh, forget K-I-E. All right? They tell you something else about this. I'm not going to uh, get into that. That's going to confuse you more than anything. So we'll just stick with those four. Everybody got it? All right. It's pretty easy, isn't it? Yeah. You just got to know all this stuff right here. It's a lot of stuff to know, but it's most of it you could kind of look at and you can say, yeah, that's probably true. It bisects that, right? That one's equal to this one. Yeah, they kind of look like they should, all right, if you draw it correctly. And that's it. That is the very last brand new lesson of the year. Yes, sir. It'll be on the chapter six test, yes. All right. So, yeah, you're not going to have another quiz. All right, so there will not be any more quizzes. No more quizzes. You like that too, don't you? But we are going to have a test, though. All right, let's figure out when we're going to take the test. Test on chapter six. So I think, did I write it down? Yeah. We're going to take it on Monday. I don't usually like giving tests on Monday, but everybody listen to me. We're not done. Listen to me. I don't normally like giving tests on, um, on Mondays, but this is different because next week is our last week to do any kind of work in class. All right? Finals are the following week. Not next week, but the next week. So we would be on, we would be on Tuesday because it goes first and second period is on Monday. Third and fourth is on Tuesday. So we would be 8 o'clock on Tuesday, whatever day that is, I don't know. Okay? Everybody with me on that? All right, so the test is on Chapter 6 on Monday. What's the date on Monday? The 13th? Monday, May 13th. So what are we doing? Uh, today's Wednesday. What are we doing Thursday, Friday? Reviewing for the test, okay? So we are going to take a chapter test before you take the final exam, all right? So next week, we'll take the test on Monday. We will do corrections on Tuesday. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we'll review for the final exam, all right? I can't even remember what the chapter was, how far we went for the midterm. But it's only covering from the midterm to the end of the year. It's not covering from chapter one, all right? So we're not doing the whole entire year. We're just going from... Third, third and fourth marking period stuff, okay? And I'll look at that after we take the test. We'll tell you. 
And if you do, I believe, I'm going to have to double check on this as well, but I'm pretty sure if you have an A, you don't have to have an A for the whole entire year. Now, don't um, quote me on this, all right? I'm going to double check about this. But I heard from the other class that they were told you only have to have an A for the third and fourth market period. So if you have an A in the third market period and you have an A for this market period, and we'll figure that out after this test, okay, this chapter six test, after that's over, everything's done, all right? So then I can figure out what your grade is for the fourth market period. Then you can look at it. If you got an A for the third and an A for the fourth, I believe, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe you're exempt from the final, all right? But even if you have one B, if you got a B and an A, you still got to take it, all right? Everybody got it? Okay. So uh, what else I was going to say? Um, there was one I, I just was talking about, and I thought I got to make sure I mentioned that. Mar, what is it? Oh, homework. Right, homework. Homework. Uh, it is 18 to 25. So this section 6-5 right here, your homework is 18 to 25. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not even listening to you. Okay, so here we go. 18 to 25 <clears throat> is your homework. That's your last homework assignment for this class of the year. So get it done. All right? You don't want to end up with a zero for your last homework assignment. Everybody should turn it in. Turn it in on time. Do all your work that you need to do. Okay? Answer every question, and you'll get a five out of five. End on a good note. Everybody good? All right.